Welcome back to the channel. Um, this is a second part of a video on using um, Overmind in React.js for state management. I'm going to walk through a simple um, user authentication uh, pattern that I've implemented using Overmind in a React app using Ionic components. Please make sure you like and subscribe. Um, I'm starting off with a um, application that was generated from the Ionic templates. Um, I have the basic uh, app. A template here but what I've done is I've added in uh, the ion router and I have created paths I have a um, private route function that I'm kind of using to protect routes and basically what I'm doing is I am checking to see if a user is authenticated and if a user is authenticated um, then I allow them through so you can see here inside the router I have a couple of routes set as uh, private and some couple of routes are just wide open that anyone can get access to um, we're going to use Overmind to keep track of the user state, do some basic authentication, and um, let's get rolling. Um, first of all, to start off, we need to uh, import the Overmind uh, files. I, I've uh, loaded npm um, Overmind already, so we don't have to go through that now. So we have um, create Overmind, we have the provider, and we have a configuration, which will come from our uh, Overmind when we set up the state. For those familiar with providers, um, Overmind provides a uh, Overmind React provides a, a provider that we're going to kind of utilize, and we're going to pass the store into that. Um, I'm using the create Overmind to create my store initially, and um, next up, let's start to create the actual files that are going to make up uh, how we manage the state. Which uh, okay. I'm playing around with names, but let's just settle on uh, just regular Overmind. It should be pretty straightforward. First up is creating an index TX, TS. Um, TypeScript is a pain in the ass, but uh, I'm going to use TypeScript in this example because that's kind of what React's doing. So the first thing we need to do is create the uh, shape of my state. And as you can see, it's pretty straightforward. We're going to keep an error, a current user, and whether or not the user is logged in. Um, so that's the type. And then next up, we're actually going to create the state object. Um, we're going to just show how you can create uh, derived types, I mean derived states, or our is logged in state is going to be derived from whether or not I have a current user. It's pretty cool. You can do some more complex things that maybe I'll show in a later video, but for now we're just simply going to look at the state value, see if there's currently a user, and if there's a user, then is logged in will be true, otherwise is logged in will be false. Um, so let's just kind of get that all laid out. A lot of kind of how these um, how um, how the state and everything is set up is is in the documentation. The documentation is amazing. I highly recommend it, and I'll include a link in the bio. Um, so now we have the basic. We've created our type for a state. We set up our state. Now let's bring in some Overmind uh, includes because we're using TypeScript. I need to declare that module. Um, and. Uh, now let's set up the state configuration that we're going to be passing back that will get included into um, creating the access for the provider. And so I need to pass back my state. Uh, later on, I'll pass back actions, which are the actual functions that you use um, to manipulate the state. And then, of course, we're using React hooks. Um, there's a way to use hooks to um, get access to your state and your actions from inside into your components. So that's what we're doing now. We're going to create this hook here called use app, and then you'll be able to import that, which will give you access to the state and the actions um, from uh, Overmind. A lot of this is boilerplate, clo and boilerplate code that's uh, straight from the documentation with minor modification for my needs. All right, so now we are back in our app, and the first thing we're going to do is we're going to use Overmind to get access, um, excuse me, to get access to the state and check and see if we have um, a current user and then leverage the, the um, is logged in. So first, as I said, we are going to get access to um, the state using the hook that we had created earlier on. So let's import uh, use app, which is our hook that we're going to get from our state that we created. OK. Um, so inside of our private root uh, single file component, right up at the top here, we're going to get the state from our hook. And then as you know, on their state, we have that property called is logged in. So we can replace our let auth user function to just completely use the state. 
Well, why am I not getting my types? Oh, I didn't import it properly. So now the amazing thing that you get, well, an amazing but pretty cool thing is you get all the types. It's one of the great things about TypeScript. So I can like actually see the properties that exist on my state. So now all we're doing is we're just pulling the state in and we're gonna use that state to determine if we can get access to these paths. Um, since I set up my state as false, I should not be able to get in. Oh, let me uh, fire up my server. Let's get my server going. Remember my state was false because we haven't done anything. Sorry, my is logged in state should be false because we have no user. Let's run this again. And, oh, I got a typo somewhere. Um, let's see. Oh no, it just needs to be recompiled. All right, here we go. Okay, so no user anywhere. Is So is logged in is derived to be false. Um, so I should not be, so it should always force me back to the login page uh, based on the way that I have everything set up. Now I'm gonna kind of hard code a user in and see what happens if we could, um, when we reload, if I change and I try to access a private route, I get access to the private route because we have a user. And if I remove it, set it back to null and try again. So we have achieved our goal. Now let's um, get to the actions. Okay. Um, so our actions, all of our actions are going to be asynchronous. I'm going to fake them um, by just creating a promise and returning a promise. In a later example, we'll actually maybe connect to a real database on the back end for authentication and see a real life, um, see real life asynchronous functions in use. Once again, a lot of heavy use of types here, um, but uh, let's get this set up and then we'll go back through and explain what's going on with the types. We, inside of our actions, we get access to the state and at effects. We will, effects are a way to kind of integrate your API. Maybe when we integrate Facebook, uh, Facebook Firebase, um, we'll uh, create uh, some effects and integrate to the Firebase API. Um, I'm passing in, the creden uh, passing in the credentials of the email and the password. It looks, it looks like I got my types mixed up somehow. They're great, but sometimes they're a pain in the ass when you're trying to get them set. All right, they're set now. Um, and then I pass in my credentials. I define the types for the credentials. Next up, we're setting a default state when we enter in, which is no error and no user. And we're going to keep it real simple here. We are going to check the credentials, and if the password is equal to some default string, password123, then we'll assume they're authenticated. So we will set the state. Uh, we'll, we'll create a fake um, current user with some properties on it. Um, so now state current user has a value and um, we, we don't need to reset the error because it's already null. Um, and so this will, because we want to return something from this function, we'll resolve this promise with a um, actual value of the user. Oh, I need to add the promise to make it asynchronous, right? So this is how you can instantiate a promise. We'll call the resolve on success and we will call the reject on the error. Um, so resolve and like I said, we'll just pass back the current user. Don't know how much value it'll be because you can pull it from the state, but just good to have it. And then in the error condition, we will set the user to null and we will set the error to the uh, to uh, error message of user not found and we'll reject this um, asynchronous call. So we have a basic login. Let's remove effects because we're not using any. And I think we have enough that we should be able to plug this action in into our login page and see it work. Um, once again, the pattern, you get access to the hook. It's pretty straightforward. Once you get the hook, the use app, you get access to all state and all actions. So we want actions this time around. And uh, we are going to use our login action that we had just created. Oh, got to make sure I pass my actions back as part of my configuration. And let's import the actions from the uh, file we just created. And we're just going to import them and pass them straight back through the configuration. And like I said, it'll give you access to your actions inside of your components. I, I, I like this way more than kind of all the boilerplate that you see with the Redux. You're just calling functions to manipulate state. So here we are. We have our, um, our login action. We pass in the credentials of email and password. Um, it is asynchronous. We're going to use async and await here. We'll get the response that comes back um, and we'll, well, this is the other thing you got to make sure you do to try catch, you can catch the errors on the back side. So since we're throwing that um, error message, you'll be able to get it um, 
um, on your try catch here. I will console log the response so that I don't get the TypeScript. Sorry, the ESLint errors of uh, not using response. In the catch error, we will use our use state to set a um, error condition locally. And so let's see if our um, login action works the way we expected it to. Oh, we, yeah, after login, I want to redirect the user to the home page. So we need to, once again, the lovely TypeScript gets you every time. So we need to um, make sure that we get access to the router history um, in our uh, functional component. So we've got to set the appropriate type so we don't get the error and import the, uh, the type from uh, react.router. All right, now we have our history that push home and on login success, we should redirect the home. Let's give this a try and see what we get. Um, everything's false. Let's try logging in and let's use our password one, two, three click our login and we're in and we're authenticated and if we check over mine you can see that our state has changed we have our fake user we have no error and our derived value is set now um, let's go back and just to finalize this um, exercise let's just create a logout we'll just copy some of this code since a lot of it's uh, similar renamed to our do logout we are not we are not passing any values in so we can set that um, to void and the value that's coming back should be a boolean so we'll change that in a bit now but um, we have our promise as usual our error and our user should be set to null when this is executed since we're not doing anything magical we can just delete all this other code and just um, resolve our promise um, as true um, we're going to assume this always works since it is, like I said, since it's true, we need to properly set our response as Boolean so it knows it's returning that Boolean as a promise. And that looks like that's pretty much it for our logout. It's pretty straightforward. Um, now it's an action, so you get access to it inside your components. So let's go over to our home uh, file. Let's quickly put a, a logout button on the end there. Shit, looks like I'm using um, the wrong yeah, the, the wrong elements. I'm, I'm still thinking about Ionic as view. Let's quickly put that back. Right, thank you. And now let's set the function. So on click, we want to call the logout. We will get access, once again, to the actions the same way we did previously. And what we want to do here is we want to um, call a function that will call our logout action. And then at the end of the logout action, when successful, get access to history once again. Um, uh, from the router and redirect the user to the log login page. Yes, so let's get our hook. I use app hook. Excuse me. Um, and then from this, so let's get access to our actions once again. And well, let's add our action. No, we don't want to do this. I think we want to. No, no, no. Let's let's create our own function. Hmm. Yeah, let's, let's create our own function. Um, get that out of there, get that out of there, get that out of there. Um, let's bring this down and, and create our function. So, do logout. And then uh, let's create our function right here. Now let's do logout. And it's asynchronous also. We'll await our response. We're not going to do anything with response. We will use our, uh, what is that? Oh, we don't need that incorrectly imported or do, uh, do logout. Sometimes it gets a little too ambitious. Okay, so we have our logout. Um, once again, let's fix our uh, functional component to get the right uh, type. So we get X to our history. Let's push back to login on lo when all logout successful. And now let's give it a try. So we log in, everything works great. And Overmine has all the data. We click our logout and we're logged out. So that's the basic example. Once again, thanks a lot for hanging in there to the end. Please like and subscribe. And um, you know, leave comments if you like this and tell me what else you'd like to see.